much. It's a pleasure to be here and an honor, really, to, to be on uh, the stage with Marit because this actually is a visual of uh, the cooperation that the president referred to this morning, as Marit has said. It is the Estonia UNDB Cooperation on Digital Transformation as Sustainable Development Pathway, quite long. And they managed that cooperation. It was launched in September 2018 on the side of the GA by both the President and the UNDP Administrator. So welcome to this session. We'll try to be quick and have a, a, an interaction towards the end, and this is what we're going to do. We'll walk us, ourselves through uh, first on the global imperative, just to have a frame for everybody's thinking as we move on towards a discussion on digital transformation, where we will focus uh, most of our, our attention uh, this afternoon. And then we'll go to the key priorities for our next steps, because there need to be next steps, and the dialogue. So, the global imperative, the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. I would uh, believe that everybody in the room is quite familiar with this already, but just to remind ourselves, 2015, the successor to the Millennium Development Goals uh, was um, agreed on by the member states of the United Nations. So from eight MDGs, or just about 18 targets, we moved to a new set of imperatives. 17 sustainable development goals, 169 targets, so very huge. What you have on the screen in, in, in front of us here is the 2018 report from which I grabbed this, the shots that you see on the screen. And I chose these three for, for, for very um, important reasons. First, to show the, the interlinkages across the challenges. All 17 goals, all 169 targets, they're interlinked, they're universal. They apply to all countries all over the world, not just for developing countries to, to achieve. And there is no cherry picking on which uh, goal you need to achieve as a country. But obviously, your national or our national priorities are defined, defining also our SDG roadmaps. So, on your towards the, the the very left here on the screen, I don't know if you can see it very clearly, but it shows the increasing acidity of the oceans. Everything that we do on land has an impact on the acidity of the ocean. So it's a concern for everybody, not just for the small island developing states that are really facing the challenges attributed to climate change and, and so on, all the disasters that come with it. And that also impacts one of the goals, which is on poverty one, actually, in the middle, which is 1.5, the economic losses attributed to disasters. So uh, it's huge, and it's not capturing, obviously, the losses uh, on, on human lives and the displacement that go along with the disasters when they hit. I'm putting on the other side because of the technological link to our session, which is um, by, uh, this is 9.C, by 2020, not by 2030, LDCs, or the least developed countries, should have universal access. And we are far from achieving it. So the, the need for, for concrete efforts is, is very real. Acceleration is becoming really important. Just to give you a, uh, the round circle now, I will call your attention to, to help us all remember the, the trajectories of all of these goals, the five Ps. So the people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnerships. So all of the 17 goals, as I said, they're interconnected, they're integrated, and they all support all of these five pillars, take forward these pillars. Just quickly, we need data, obviously, to make informed decisions, policies, and also to track progress. Where are we towards 2030? But the red ones, to flag, they're missing. We don't have data on those. So there's a lot of push to look to te te technologies, digital capacities, to help us uh, track the SDGs, deliver on the SDGs, and so on and so forth. That is connected to the key trends and issues uh, that we are facing at the moment. So quickening fourth IR, fourth industrial revolution, very much um, looked to with eagerness by many countries. But we have to remind ourselves that not all countries are in fact progressing 
an uneven pace, including in the achievement of the SDGs. So some countries are at risk of being left behind. The technologies that we see could help many developing countries a great deal are in fact not available to them as yet. It's not a problem technology, the technology is there, and in fact technology changes very quickly. But where we're, we're getting the challenge is, is how we can have this equitable access to these technologies, along with all the concerns that come with that, the financing, the skills, and, and so on and so forth. Along with that, obviously, is the quickly evolving economies and societies. So as technologies move forward, shaping trans and, and transforming economies and societies, we have some countries that are really moving forward in, in, with, great, with great speed and, and so on and so forth, and then some countries also being left behind. Increasingly digital and also urban. The UN projects that by 2050, most of humanity, close to 70%, will be living in cities. So those of us who are working in the smart cities field, we are seeing, obviously, the big push to, to build not only the world we want, but the cities that we want. So a lot of investments going to smart cities technologies, but then again, um, we have to ask you again to have a specific focus on those countries that are, at risk, that are playing catch up and may at risk, be at risk of being left behind. So other risks that we are concerned about in the development field would be um, rising inequality, violence and conflict, environmental pressures. So you could be on a path for, for solid progress, but in many cases, especially cities that are along the coast, it only takes one disaster to wipe a lot of, of progress. Yeah. You will recall in 2011, the tsunami in Japan, it not only affected a great deal Japan itself, but the countries that work with Japan. So in Philippines and Thailand and Vietnam, there were a lot of factories that closed down because of that, and a lot of people lost livelihoods, and economic opportunities obviously dissolve as well, with a lot of the people displaced, factories closed, and so on and so forth. Now, I keep referring to leaving no one behind, the risk. It's one of the promises and the commitments of the 2030 Agenda, the SDGs, that in all of this, as we put all our efforts towards 2030, we need to ensure that no one is left behind, that, proper, that prosperity is shared equitably, including, obviously, the digital dividends. So, five years on in SDG implementation, where are we? There is a need for acceleration. The goal is very ambitious. 17 uh, goals and 169 targets. And in many countries, there is a lot of need for really strategic efforts. So in UNDP, we have come to this approach that we call strategic solutions. So a combination of efforts that can propel or move the needle on specific goals, right? So we, in, in addressing poverty, governance, and, and so on and so forth, from SDG 1 to 16, we have focused a lot of interventions towards uh, these strategies that um, could propel all of this in specific settings. So setting is always important. Context is always important. Fourth industrial revolution. The technological change is very rapid, and the impact is widespread immense significant. This is from the World Economic Forum, and you can see a lot of elements that go into it. So it's more than just hardware and software. And the interconnectedness is something that we need to think of as we move forward and when we discuss the digital transformation. Our effort here has an impact here. One change here can have another change here, or maybe a regression there. So always the interconnectedness is very important to keep in mind. Now, why did the cooperation focus on digital transformation and sustainable development pathway? One, with the digital revolution, we're seeing that a lot of countries are looking to digital technologies to move them forward on their goals. So you will see a lot of ICT efforts and digital uh, technologies being used to propel progress on SDG 1, reducing poverty or eradicating poverty, in addressing climate change, environmental pressures, in enhancing e-governance and, and building the capacities of, of governments for, for governing for the future. But there's also the challenge in many countries where digital transformation itself is a challenge. 
in building the local ecosystem that they need to have to really ensure even progress forward. So both using digital capacities, resources, and tools to propel the SDGs, and then transforming the digital landscape itself to transform entire economies and societies. This is the uh, launch in September 2018. So why we're working with Estonia, I don't think it's, it's, it's a, a mystery why Estonia and our panelists and the speakers this morning have really showed us the, the case for it. And with, with all of us here coming to Estonia for the conference, I think we're, we all have the same um, thoughts about the capacities of Estonia and all of those gathered here to, to what we can do to propel the SDGs forward. We focus on developing, first of all, the diagnostic tool. So, once again, why have a diagnostic tool? There are a lot of tools out there already. But there is none that we have come across in our work across regions that really help us to see and understand what is going on in the country and within a country, going down to subnational level, to see where the local, uh, the country is and the local communities are when it comes to readiness and preparedness for the digital society that we talk about. And there is a need for a way to understand also how the system, the local digital ecosystem, is being built to now build the digital economy, digital society that we believe is just around the corner for many countries, now real to many countries. So we leaned on an approach that we have in the UN, which is called the Rapid Integrated Assessment Applied in this Landscape. So we have used this methodology to assist the development of SDG roadmaps across regions. So it's being used by the development group, the UN System Development Group, applied already in 64 countries and to the subnational levels within some countries. We are working towards this tool, also leaning on the expertise of Estonia, especially provided by the EGA, in adopting their approach to assessing digital landscape, understanding what the nuts and bolts are on the ground, towards assisting, once again, the development of a digital transformation roadmap. And very much integral to this effort is understanding where the bottlenecks are, the challenges, to really propel a country forward. Where should investments be focused on? And what is hampering the brilliant strategies, the significant investments? Why are they not moving the needle in certain contexts? Now, the tool. The RIA, Rapid Integrated Assessment. We are short for time, so I will speed you through this, but we are at the speaker's corner if you want to know the nuts and bolts of this assessment. So in, I have been part of the interagency team, interdisciplinary team, that are deployed to the countries to assist the development of SDG roadmaps of countries. So what we're doing here is to look at the level of alignment between the national priorities, and the strategies on ICTs and the investments on ICTs. So the linkages across targets, not just on the goal, but really target by target, and then looking at the relevant indicators. So why relevance? Because obviously, if you're a landlocked country, the goals and the targets that are specific to oceans may not be such a priority to you. So we lock in on those priorities that really are the, the, the areas where the, the country needs to focus on to propel progress. And the landscape of the entities. Who is responsible for what within the government? Who are the stakeholders? Who are the players? So the primary audience, we are doing this obviously in support of the program countries, our member states. And we are working closely with the government and the stakeholders within the country. So there's a lot of consultation. There's a lot of elbow-to-elbow -elbow kind of huddling and, and discussing and looking and pouring over documents and so on and so forth. The main steps to this methodology are, are, are three. So we gather, as we do with SDG roadmaps, we gather all the plans and the strategies that are available. And then we look at them for the digital ICT strategies. And then we do a desk review. So we exclude, as I said, the targets that are not re so relevant to the country or not the primary uh, priorities. And then along with that, we assess the gaps. And then we identify, obviously, uh, the potential linkages. And we, we prepare uh, a, 
an observations document that we call it, because we have to track all of this, right? We do this now manually, but we are in, in discussion with, with some partners on, on utilizing AI to assist us all of this, because as you can imagine, the, the priorities, the targets, indicators are immense. So we need a little bit more assistance on this one. This is an example of what then the observations uh, document would look like. So target by target, what, um, what the data are, are showing us, um, not showing us, and this. Time's up. Somebody talk, uh, stop me. Can I move? Yeah. So this is the this is just a portion of of the result that you will see. It's it's huge. And then we, we create a profile of where the country is when it comes to the five pillars. And this is what you will see, just as you have seen in this morning in the presentation. This is the presentation of the profile of the country when it comes to the five pillars, where they are on peace, prosperity, uh, and so on and so forth. And my time is up. I will now give the floor to my colleague, Marit. You will hear more from Minerva a bit later, but uh, I'm just going to go quickly through the tool that the eGovernance Academy is more focused on bringing to the partnership. And um, this tool is something that we have been using in more than, well, we have worked together with more than 130 countries. And uh, whenever we start working with a new country, because there are still some that we haven't worked with, um, then we do a quick assessment of what their digital landscape looks like at the moment. And when we do this assessment, we are not only looking at national plans and, and some targets set, as uh, the UNDP is more focused on, but we really look at some very practical aspects of, uh, of what is in place already in terms of IC, IC, uh, ICT. And uh, this means that we are um, first looking at the organization. We are looking at what kind of organizational structure is there in place for uh, e-government, um, whether there are CIOs in place, um, whether there is the legal framework available, um, whether there is a cooperation with the private sector, um, what kind of uh, projects are there already in place and so on. Then we, of course, look at the legal framework. Um, what kind of acts are there? What kind of strategies are in place? Um, in terms of the strategic framework, uh, what kind of national priorities are set in the different national plans? Um, then, of course, we look also at infrastructure. Um, what kind of uh, government digital communication networks are in place? Uh, whether there are data centers already in the country? Um, whether cloud is used? Uh, whether there's access to internet and wireless technologies and so on? Um, then uh, digital uh, identity, which has already been talked a lot about uh, today as well. So we are looking at uh, first um, uh, management of population, um, whether um, there is a unique persistent identifier for everybody uh, in the country, and whether this has been translated in some kind of a digital identif identification, um, such as um, an ID card or um, other forms of EID or mobile ID. And, of course, whether there are already trust services in place um, for the a bit more advanced countries as well as then, of course, digital signature as well. Um, in, at the eGovernance Academy, we always try to balance um, the uh, eGovernment against e democracy and e-participation. So what we also look at is whether there are specific tools in place for uh, people to uh, participate in, um, in the government and uh, in the society. Um, whether um, there are some strategy, strategies in place and whether there are, have been assigned some uh, organizations who are responsible for e-government, uh, for e-participation in that particular country. And, of course, uh, we look at uh, what kind of main registers are in place, um, what kind of e-services are already offered, uh, what kind of access there is to general e-services, and, um, and so on. So this forms, uh, this is like a huge questionnaire uh, based on which we have very good understanding then uh, what is happening in the country and what are the future goals. So what we are going to do with this information is, of course, analyze the general situation, but then we're also going to um, a bit try to position the countries um, on different development levels um, in the different areas. 
Um, so for instance, if we look at, at this example, then we have mapped out what the uh, le development levels of digital identity could be. Um, so a country could find themselves at a basic level or at a useful level, level or uh, in the case of some more advanced countries at the sustainable level. Um, so we have built these kind of mapping scenarios for um, all the different um, areas that we look at. And of course this also gives some advice to countries where they could be next headed and what could be the next development steps that they could take. Um, and of course then we do some recommendations based on what we have found out. And uh, whatever we are um, then advising the country to do will also give input to the other um, tools that we are being we have developed and are developing uh, together with the UNDP, uh, especially to the uh, rapid integrated assessment and um, the um, uh, bottleneck assessment, the accelerator and bottleneck assessment, uh, assessment which Minerva will be talking about. And of course, it's also possible then, um, as a later stage or as a separate um, endeavor, to create a digital transformation roadmap, which would be a much um, um, more lengthy document for the country um, if, if needed. And uh, with this, I give the floor back to Minerva for you, the third tool. This methodology, the, the ABBA as we call it, this is, this is actually um, a lot of nitty gritty work. It's very exciting work though because that's where we really look into the context from the national to the local level on where the country is, right? And what challenges the country is facing. Where, where are the bottlenecks? We're talking acceleration here because with 169 targets, 17 goals, for any country that's a real huge task and, and, and mission to, to achieve by 2030. That's just 10 years away. So if you focus on investments on just key and then leave others behind, then you really have not moved forward on your entire SDG roadmap. So what we're looking for here are the strategic initiatives that could really move the needle on a lot of goals. And then in doing that, move the country forward on all the goals. Obviously, with digital transformation as a very central part of it. So, obviously, we start with a theory of change. Uh, development planners is familiar to you. So, your assumptions, if you, you start from the top going down, this is where you want the country to be, what you envision is to be, and then you work yourself down, and then you work yourself up again. So it's, it's a lot of, of analysis, uh, looking at data and so on and so forth. So identifying the accelerator and the related challenges. So for instance, in one country, sustainable prosperity is, is considered a, an accelerator, right? Feeding into uh, entrepreneurship and innovation. So what are the challenges attached to that? And then the drivers then to propel entrepreneurship and, and innovation. So there's just one tiny piece of the whole work. It's vast. You move on to your SDGs on health, SDGs on, on innovation, SDGs in cities, and so on. So it's, it's, it's now becoming the, the universe of, if you're a doctor, you're really at the entire, looking at the entire patient, right? The interdisciplinary work becomes then very critical. And potential accelerators and drivers and interventions, then you try to, to, to connect the dots. And the focusing also on towards the very level where, where impact can be seen and moving back and forth. A lot of consultations going on with the government, with the stakeholders, and validation. So us, in the, in the same way that we did the SDG roadmap development, we are doing the same for the digital transformation roadmap. There's a lot of engagement. There's a lot of validation. Is the government saying the same thing as the, as the business sector, the private sector, all in one room? So there is quick validation. And then you can move forward with everybody clear on what needs to be done. Bottleneck categories, I'm sure this is very familiar to everybody, but this comes up all the time. Political will. In many cases, finance is a huge bottleneck. In many cases, the finance is there, political will is not. Integration is a key challenge. The technology may be not there, still to be adopted. There is low adoption. There is resistance from the public. There is resistance from the government. There is lack of expertise, lack of trust in the government, lack of, of, of trust in who can come and help you. So this is where UNDP and Estonia are, are, are cooperating together 
uh, noting, obviously, and we are very, very proud of this, that we are uh, trusted as the, the objective um, convener and, and partner for, for many countries. And Estonia having the trust of many countries as well in the approaches and trajectories that it has done. So, and we noted the need to accelerate. So in the need to accelerate, obviously, you need to be very, very strategic of where you put all your efforts behind. So we have come across this, this uh, we have developed, not come across, we have developed this approach, which is a combination of efforts. You will refer to the, the first um, graphic that I have shown you in the beginning of, of this session. So when you combine all of your investments and your efforts, for instance, in this combination of, of, or in this pool of efforts, then you begin to hit a lot of the things. For instance, youth employment, gender equality. Then you begin to hit gender, uh, the, the goal on five, goal on one, goal 16 on governance, and goal um, the safety of women, and goal 11 in cities. So when you focus your, your efforts towards these, these um, initiatives, then you can begin to propel or move the needle, right, on many SDGs. But that takes a lot of, of strategic planning. And before we move on to this um, uh, digital tool to be, to be launched, we need to pilot it. So if there are countries here who would like to be a pilot country, feel free to come forward. But we are able to do this only in, this, in a limited number. And we will perfect the tool as, as we, we pilot this and we learn from, from what we see on the ground. And we will launch it towards the, the end of the year, but we will introduce it in a high-level event during the GA in, in September. And we are also developing the tool towards application at the city level. Many cities with population greater than Estonia, a lot of the cities now adopting and, and really focusing investments towards building smart cities in the hope of building the cities of the future just as the IGTs is supposed to build the future that we want. Now, part of the cooperation with Estonia, a big deal of, of it is about capacity building. Within the UNDP, we have developed a digital strategy because to, to support the program countries in their digital transformation pathway, UNDP should also be fully equipped to, to be that support, to accompany the countries in different contexts. So we, we, we work across all contexts, from the conflict to the to the stable uh, context and so on and so forth. So a lot of that is going to be about building knowledge, building skills, building, um, enhancing understanding of, of reality on the ground and, and what could be brought in to, to advance that reality on the ground, and network building. And uh, this, this is really about partnerships building, very much about SDG 17, but we always believe that expertise does not reside in just one person one sector, one, one agency. Just as the SDGs, it requires all of us to, to move it forward and in, in, uh, in, in, in ensure even progress. So, we have come to the end of it. We rushed you through it because we were given only 40 minutes because we would like to ensure that we have the 10 minutes now to, to engage with you. If you have questions, we can always go back to the slides if you have a need for some details. And, and Marit? You can add some questions um, to the, to the uh, workshop tool. However, we have already got a very good question, uh, which we uh, should have maybe highlighted a bit more. Uh, and this is, how do the UNDP and DGA approaches and diagnostic tools interact? Ah. Uh, yes, so uh, we have, of course, uh, uh, thought about this, uh, how, to, how to make this into a yes. whole. And uh, maybe I would just start uh, off by saying that, of course, within our um, analysis that we do, we will also uh, see, based on our experience, what could be the uh, bottlenecks of that country and what could be the accelerators. Um, and, of course, we are working together with the same strategy, mm -hmm. strategy documents, but there will be a joint analysis at the end of this. Yes. Um, the methodology that we walk you through, those are the three pieces, right? The two that were developed by UNDP are really the tools used in the UN system to assist the development of SDG roadmaps. But in many cases, we are missing the, the digital parts. So we turn to the experts to build that part. And that's the cooperation with Estonia and the survey that Estonia uses and leaning on the, the trajectory of Estonia, obviously, Estonia was a program country in the past, and in just uh, a few years, maybe a couple of decades, became our donor country. 
So there's a lot that can be learned from it, and a lot of countries are really interested in how Estonia did it. So what we're trying to ensure here is that the sustainable development efforts on the ground and the digital transformation efforts are not only parallel, but integrated, right? So when we do poverty reduction, obviously it has to operate in a landscape that is now totally changed by digital technologies. Economy is changing fast with technologies, society is changing fast, governments and so on and so forth are changing fast with the technical, uh, uh, digital technologies. So our support to governments and, and, and our stakeholders obviously need to take that into consideration. And a lot of investments that go into the digital uh, landscape. So it's not just about investing in hardware and software, but we want to ensure that that really supports the transformation of the economies and the societies towards a sustainable future. Um, so a couple more questions have come in. Um, I think we still have a minute. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a question, um, speculate for us, in mm -hmm. what circumstances is food cybersecurity an enabler? Food cybersecurity an enabler. <clears throat> Let's do, take two things here, first of all, food security, right? Okay, let's connect it to the I first, would be one of the first slides. This is very interesting. One of the first slides that, that we have seen, the disaster, the connectivity, and so on, right? So a lot of our activities now are done online, um, ordering online, e-commerce, e-trade, and so on and so forth. But still, those goods have to be moved physically, right? And 80 to 90% of the goods are still moved on the ocean through shipping. So you could just imagine the, the acidification, the carbon dioxide, the impact of petroleum and so on and so forth in the acidity of, of the oceans and how that affects, obviously, the environmental pressures, the climate change, and all of those have impact to all of us, specifically to the small island developing states. They're bearing a lot of the brunt of all of these activities that are not done by them. So why, when do we talk about food security, it's part of that chain, right? We have to eat. We all have to be secure about where our food is going to come from. And where does cybersecurity come into this? If we're saying that society's economies are now becoming even more digital, a lot of these processes are now digital, right? Somebody talk about cyber attacks, the integrity of systems. So any attack on any part of the chain could destabilize the entire chain. So cybersecurity is very much an integral part of food security as well on various levels. So if we have the digital technology experts in, in the room working with development experts, we, we really should get our, our heads together to, to support uh, countries all over the world. Yes, as Hannes was also saying um, in the morning, is that we have done the exercise of mapping the different SDGs and their goals mm. uh, with, to, get, uh, with <coughs> the, uh, to kind of combine them and uh, attach them to certain digital development um, goals and strategies, and, and we yes. can really find almost well, something digital for each of the categories, so uh, for each mm. of the goals. So this will be an exercise that we are now doing, and I see that there are some interesting questions here, but we will be uh, later on available in, at the speaker's corner, mm -hmm. so we can answer all your questions there. But for the time being, I would like to thank Minerva for, thank you. uh, for your presentation, and you. uh, we will then meet you later on.